So we've made it to the third really nice property of the mixed logit model, which is that it works well with panel data. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the, the basic idea here is that the structure of the mixed logit model allows for more flexibility in representing how a single decision maker might make multiple choices over time. And so it's going to provide a better model for most, maybe all panel data settings. And, and, and the underlying idea here is that in the logit and even the nested logit and other generalized extreme value models, the unobserved factors that influence utility were represented by epsilon. And if this is a panel, then we could think about having for each individual and each time period T, we have a vector of epsilons representing each, uh, each alternative. But every one of these epsilon sub NTs is IID. So multiple, uh, multiple people in the same time period, they're independent from one another, and the same person over multiple time periods. We assume that the, the same person over multiple time periods is independent. And so we can kind of allow for correlations among observed things in the data, but this epsilon, everything that's random unobserved that goes into the model for logit or nested logit have to be IID over time. And, and so that's just not gonna uh, kind of accommodate any kind of unobserved or random correlations over time. And so if we think there's anything influencing our model that we don't explicitly include in representative utility, and that there might be correlations over time there, then a logit or nested logit model are not going to represent panel data well. But we talked about how the mixed logit model can allow for this kind of unobserved preference variation by using these random coefficients that can either represent individual specific coefficients or just flexible substitution patterns or flexible correlations of random utility, whichever way you think about it. What this is going to do is yield correlations in utility over time for the same decision maker. And that's exactly what we need to think about a model kind of really realistically representing a panel data setting. And so the idea here uh, is we can add a time index, we'll call it T to our random utility model. And we're gonna, we're gonna do that, that kind of random coefficients, random utility model here, but we could work through this exact same thing for, the, for, for, for that, that second representation we had. Uh, so we're gonna have a T on utility, a T on our data X's and a T on uh, a T on our epsilon here. But note, we're going to leave beta as just beta sub n. We're not going to put a T there. So we're going to assume that people's preferences are consistent over time. We could relax this and actually model how people's preferences change over time. But I think to really see how this property works, we're just going to assume that these preferences are constant over time. And so I think you can already start to see here, if we're gonna assume that beta is constant over time, then that's gonna introduce some kind of uh, correlations over time, but we'll get there. And, and so then what we're gonna do is consider that kind of, we don't just have one outcome for everyone, right? If we have panel data, then we actually have multiple outcomes. We see what they choose in period one, period two, period three, all the way up to period capital T. And so we're gonna define this vector as kind of bold I, instead of just a single, a single normal I here to define what, what choice was made, we're gonna have bold vector I, which says, what did they choose in period one? What did they choose in period two? And so on. And so then we can write down the conditional logit pro choice, pro uh, choice probability. So this is once again, conditional logit choice probability for a sequence of choices. So once again, we're kind of entering into thought experiment world here and saying, if we knew someone's beta, then their conditional logic choice probability would be, remember, we've got multiple choices happening here, one in every single time period. So we're gonna say the probability that they make that full sequence of choices over time is going to be you can think about this as just taking the logit choice probability in each time period and multiplying those together. 
And then we're going to get this expression here for, uh, for the conditional logit choice probability. It's just like we had before. It's just that now that we have multiple time periods, we're going to need to multiply, uh, multiply our logit choice probabilities together to represent multiple time periods. Once we've done that though, the kind of final step here is exactly the same. We want to think about calculating this thing for every possible value of beta out there and taking the weighted average, which is we're going to get through this integral form here. So all we've done is we basically just said that instead of thinking about a single choice i going on the left hand side and the right hand side here, we're going to have this more complex vector of i's, which requires us to think about taking this product. So it adds just kind of an extra dimensionality and it adds an extra product inside of our integral. And so um, you can see here that if we're thinking that a given beta is consistent over time, which we're effectively doing here, we're saying beta and we're holding that beta fixed for every time period, well, now we're essentially introducing correlations by th thinking that someone's beta, someone has their own beta, and that that beta is consistent over time. And so we've kind of baked that uh, overtime correlation into this log this conditional logit choice probability, which gets baked into our, our mixed logit choice probability. Um, when you do this, you can kind of incorporate some quote unquote dynamics and I'm putting dynamics in, in air quotes here because it's not, not what we would call a fully kind of dynamic discrete choice model, but, but some kind of intertemporal things can be included here. We can include past or future exogenous variables uh, to kind of model either lagged or anticipatory behavior. So our X's could be things from, even though it's, it's X T we could, or even though we're in time period T, we could think about choosing X's from either before T or for app from after T. Um, we can include lag dependent variables. So what did you choose last period that can be included to represent some kind of like state dependence. But, but really this is kind of a, a, a relatively naive way of incorporating dynamics into a discrete choice model. We're essentially thinking of a series of static choices here. Um, and if we wanted to really represent a fully dynamic discrete choice model, we'd want to model how every choice affects subsequent choices. Or, or to put that differently, if you know that your choice today is going to affect things in the future, then you want your, your choice today to include the fact that that sets you up for different states of the world in the future. And we're kind of going beyond what we want to talk about here. Um, I just want to point out that if you're really concerned about the dynamics of your mixed logit model, then that's probably a different kind of model could, called a dynamic discrete choice model, which it gets of course, more complicated, but we will talk about that in the last week of the semester. So that's one of the big kind of empirical considerations here is thinking about panel data, but we'll talk about a couple others in the next video on other empirical considerations of.